Greetings to all you Ampaholics out there in YouTube land. Today's video is part two of the How Tremolos Work video series. In this one, we'll discuss how the opto isolator or photoresistor type of tremolo functions. This video is a milestone for Rusty and me in that its posting will just about coincide with our channel receiving its one millionth view. So I wanted to say thanks to you all out there for supporting us and watching our videos. As a result, I'm going to try to make this one real special. We're going to use an oscilloscope. We're going to actually watch the tremolo in action within the chassis. Uh, and we're going to get a chance to mop surf with Jack the Cat. Now to get the festivity started, uh, because both tremolos use uh, phase shift oscillator loops, I thought you might get a kick out of seeing what the oscilloscope image of the signal from the phase shift oscillator looks like. Here's an oscilloscope view of the oscillation loop itself. Uh, we're at a speed setting of about one here, and as you can see, it's oscillating at a little over one and a half cycles per second. I'm going to crank the uh, speed control up, and I think you'll see that the oscillation rate will increase to about six cycles per second. So it appears that the oscillation rate of the uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb uh, for the tremolo is about uh, one and a half to six cycles per second. Hey Rusty, you going to help me with this video? So let's get started. Uh, in part one, we discussed how the phase shift oscillator functions. Uh, if you're not familiar with that or have not seen uh, the part one video, you should watch it. But I'm going to start there with the phase shift oscillator loop that we saw in part one. It's going to output its signal to the grid of a 12AX7 tube. The plate output of that 12AX7 is going not to the grid of another tube, but to a neon bulb. As you can see, the one wire goes in, the other wire coming out goes through a what amounts to a plate resistor, a 100K resistor, and then it's connected to the 450 volt B plus from the power supply. So as the phase shift oscillator signal uh, rises up and down here on the grid of the 12AX7 tube, it's going to uh, amplify it greatly and put out a much higher voltage signal that will pass through the neon bulb and make it flash. When the signal is high, the bulb will flash on, and when the signal is low, the bulb will flash off. We have very closely coupled here to the neon bulb a photoresistor. This is its classic symbol. We see the little resistor with a circle around it and the light shining down on it. Now, most photoresistors are made of a substance called cadmium sulfide uh, that, because of its molecular structure, has a varying resistance depending on whether or not light is shining on it. Thus the name photoresistor. If you look down here when the uh, neon light is on at its brightest, the resistance of the photoresistor is minimum. When the light is off, the resistance is maximum. So we end up with what appear to be two curves that are out of phase, uh, in uh, which the amount of resistance is indirectly proportional to the amount of light. Now, the fact that the phases are reversed does not matter to us in the tremolo. These are not signals that are going to be amplified or neutralized, anything else in the amp. This is simply a graphic presentation of varying light and varying resistance. Now, if uh, we see up here that one lead from the photoresistor goes to ground, and the other comes over here to a 50K tremolo intensity pot. One end of the pot is grounded and the other end will go up to the input of the phase inverter in the amplifier circuit. Now this is how the tremolo intensity control works. 
when the wiper is cranked down here to the one position of intensity, which is minimal, then the signal, the music signal that's up here in the amp, uh, is going to see a 50,000 ohm resistance to ground, which is not terribly appealing, so it will go on into the phase inverter. But when we crank the wiper up here to a position of 10, which is the highest possible intensity, then the music signal is going to see a very appealing route to ground through the photoresistor, which is much, much lower than the 50K. So with the intensity up to 10, the music signal up here will come down and go to ground through the photoresistor in varying amounts. When the resistance is high because the bulb is uh, not lit, then the music signal will go on into the phase inverter. When the resistance is low because the bulb is lit, then the uh, music signal will pass through the photoresistor to ground, giving us this rhythmic rise and fall of volume dependent on the changing resistance in the photoresistor due to the flashing neon bulb. Hey Rusty, I know you're very busy, but would you mind coming into the workshop and helping me with this video? Well, if not, do you mind if I use your little kitty in one of the video parts? Okay, now let's take a look at a Fender Deluxe Reverb schematic which happens to use the ty this type of tremolo. People are always asking me for videos about how to interpret schematics. Well, let's uh, try to work a little of that uh, into this video. First off, I think most of you know that the Deluxe Reverb has two inputs. One is a normal clean input, and the other is the vibrato channel, which allows you to use either the tremolo or the reverb or both. When we input to the normal channel, we're going to come in here to the uh, V1, the first half of a 7025. We'll go through the tone and volume controls, and then we'll come over here to the second half of that 7025. We'll leave the plate, and we will come up here through our coupling capacitor uh, over here and into the input of the 12 AT7 long tail pair phase inverter. The signal completely bypasses this tube. It's like a bridge. It goes up over, across, and into the phase inverter. Now, if you decide that you want to use some reverb or tremolo, and who doesn't, uh, you plug in here to the vibrato channel, your signal will come in through 7025, go through separate uh, tone and volume controls, uh, come over here to the second half of the 7025, just like what's above, but there now is a difference. You're going to send some of that plate signal down here to the reverb. You're also going to send some of it up here to this 7025, which was bypassed by the clean channel. This will be what we call our dry input for the reverb. The rest of the dry input is going to come down here, go through the reverb, come out right here and come up and what we call the wet output is going to be mixed with it and fed into the 7025. So if you utilize the reverb, you're turning on this section down here of the circuit. If you turn on the tremolo, let's take a look down here at this section of the circuit and compare it to the diagram I showed you in the beginning of the video. Alright, I think you see that we have essentially an identical uh, phase shift oscillator right here. And then as predicted in the um, diagram, we're going to send from the loop, we're going to send signal over here to the grid of this second half of a 12AX7. And then we're going to come out of the plate and go into our neon bulb, which is this little two like uh, D's back to back right here, and then down through a what amounts to a plate resistor and to our B+. We have our standard uh, speed control here, just like we did in the first video. We have our foot pedal over here, just like we did. Uh, now, uh, when we come over here to the 
photo isolator or uh, photo resistor. Uh, we have our neon light then flashing right here. And here is the photo resistor, one end of it to ground and the other to the 50K pot, just as described. Now let's move over and take a close look at a very significant difference between this type of photoresistor tremolo and the one discussed in the first video, which was a bias modulating video. Notice in this case that the tremolo circuit here does not in any way connect with the biasing circuit for the output tubes. Now this is why this type of tremolo is used in your more powerful amplifiers simply because it's really not a good idea to vary the bias on highly driven tubes. You will prematurely age them and can cause uh, other problems. This type of tremolo then leaves our higher power tubes with their bias unaltered and focuses strictly on altering the volume of the output signal. We've already discussed how the 50K intensity pot works. So now let's move the camera up and watch as this line takes our signal into the phase inverter. Now, here is the wire that is connected to our tremolo circuit and it attaches at this point. If we look over here, we have the signal from the vibrato channel coming in either with or without reverb to this grid. And then this 7025 uh, will put out from the plate the signal from the vibrato channel, which comes down here, makes a little turn, goes through the 0.1 microfarad coupling capacitor, and reaches the same point as the tremolo circuit connection. Now, if the tremolo is turned on, when the music signal gets to this point, there will be a pathway to ground through the tremolo circuit wire that varies in resistance, rising and falling as the photoresistor responds to the neon bulb. And when the resistance is high, the signal will go on into the phase inverter. When the resistance is low, the signal will come down and pass through the photoresistor to ground. So the signal then that's going into the phase inverter to be amplified will rise and fall and rise and fall in exactly the pattern that we associate with the tremolo effect. So with the tremolo on at this point, the music signal will be modulated depending on the intensity and speed of the tremolo settings. If the tremolo is turned off, the music signal will then pass unabated right here and into the phase inverter where it will be amplified and output. Okay, let's take a little break from all this boring detail and take a look at Rusty's new pet kitten uh, named Jack. Uh, and let's do a little mop surfing with Jack the cat. And now for our show and tell uh, session, I'm going to use the chassis from a Silver Face Fender Deluxe Reverb, which happens to use the Opto Isolator type of tremolo. Anytime you're going to do any work on a Fender tremolo, you have to have the tremolo pedal uh, plugged in uh, and the button pressed in the on position, which is grounded. Either that or you can simply ground the RCA plug right here uh, that goes to the tremolo pedal. As you can see, we've got a nice, clean, fairly original chassis here in our Deluxe Reverb. Right here are the three capacitors uh, for the oscillation loop, 0.02 and 2.01 microfarad capacitors. These have been changed. Um, and down here is the little uh, photoresistor unit. Now here is a little photoresistor unit. The neon bulb is on top and these are the two wires that connect it to the amplifier circuit. 
the cadmium sulfide photoresistors at the bottom you can see it has a circular shape and its wires come out here and connect to the circuit so four wires total two for the resistor two for the bulb and then all sealed in uh, shrink wrap so that no light can get in other than the light from the neon bulb itself now I'm going to connect a ohmmeter probe to one side of the photoresistor and then crank the intensity control for the tremolo all the way up to 10. And when I do this I think you'll see that the resistance will climb up to right around 50k as the schematic would lead us to expect. Now just to demonstrate that the photoresistor is indeed sensitive to light I'm going to shine a little light in the end of the um, shrink wrap tubing here and some of it will land on the uh, photoresistor and we should see a fluctuation in the resistance. Let's see what happens. Here goes the light, no light, light, no light. So as you can see it does indeed respond to visible light. Now let's watch on an analog ohmmeter. Uh, as I crank the intensity up to 10 and I have the tremolo working, watch how the resistance in the photoresistor is changing. Now we're at slow speed. This is at a speed setting of 1. Now watch it speed up. We're getting up to 5. And at 10, it's moving so fast that the needle really can't respond quickly enough. Let me slow it back down. Here we are with the uh, resistance varying at a speed of 1 on the speed control. Now let's take a look at the end of the little photoresistor packet and we can see the tip of the neon bulb right here and you can see that it's flashing. It's sort of a reddish light. Uh, let me turn up the speed control. You'll see that it's going to flash faster. Okay, that's at 10 and then we'll go back down to 1. Remember that our speed control uh, increases and decreases the rate of oscillation within our phase shift oscillator and then it puts out the voltage to the neon bulb uh, at the uh, frequency of oscillation which right here is probably 10 times a second and down here at a speed setting of 1 is about 0 0.5 cycles per second. Now let's take a look at the voltage being supplied to the neon bulb. Uh, as you can see it's rather high because it's coming right off the plate of that uh, second half of the 12AX7 that we discussed. Uh, it's up around 400 volts or so and uh, this is at a tremolo speed setting of 1 and you can see that the uh, oscillation loop is oscillating at a rather low rate and as I speed up the oscillator loop the needle finally can no longer respond. It's trying to go back and forth too fast and that's at a setting of 5 right there. Um, I'll slow it back down to 1. So as you can see the sine wave of voltage fluctuation that's produced by the phase shift oscillator and applied to the little neon bulb is translated in the uh, photoresistor unit uh, into a matching sine wave of uh, varying resistance. And now for a brilliant finale. I have the Deluxe Reverb here operating with the tremolo on. As you can see, the little neon bulb flashing. I have an ancient tube powered uh, Heath kit signal generator putting a 2000 cycle per second signal into the uh, Deluxe Reverb and then I've connected oscilloscope probes to the 6V6 grids and connected over here to a Tektronics oscilloscope so that we can see what the signal on the grids of the 6V6s look like when the tremolo is on and when it's off. 
Okay, here is the oscilloscope screen, and as you can see, we've got a 2,000 cycle per second signal being put into the grid of the left-hand 6v6, and down here is the right-hand 6v6. Since this signal has been sent by the phase inverter to the two 6v6s, it is 180 degrees out of phase. Now, before we go any further, uh, let's discuss what the amplitude of the wave means, which means how high it is above a central line and how far below it goes. And the amplitude of the wave is indicative of the volume of the signal. I'm going to crank the volume up on the amp. Watch what happens to the amplitude. See, they get so big, that, so tall, that they actually start to overlap. Okay, so amplitude equals volume. Now watch what happens to the amplitude when I start to crank the intensity of the tremolo up. See it drop? See how the waves are collapsing? Down toward the central axis. This is an intensity of 5 right here. And when we go up to 8 and now 10, you can see that there's actually kind of a wavy central line that's forming. That is the minimum volume, and the uh, amplitude when it's up high here is the maximum volume. So you can see that with an intensity of 10, the volume um, fluctuation here in the signal is tremendous. Uh, there is no sound because I'm running uh, the speaker outlet into a dummy load, which is a big heat dissipating 8 ohm resistor rather than to a speaker, because it would drive you crazy if you had to listen to it. Okay, now I have the intensity set at 5, and I'm going to run the speed up to 10 slowly. See how much faster the fluctuation occurs. It doesn't seem quite as deep, but it's definitely fast. I will now back off back to the minimum speed of 1. Well, that about does it on this two-part video series of how tremolos work. In part 1, we just discussed the bias modulating tremolo, and in this part 2 video, we talked about the photoresistor type of tremolo. I hope it all made sense and that it was interesting, uh, and that you will stay tuned for future video releases. Rusty and I wish you the very best and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Are you ready to help me with this video? Huh? You ready to just leap into action in the workshop? My lord, I can't believe it. He's actually going in to help. <laughs>